Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and uh, this one is about mobile phones because uh, I thought I'd find out what all the hype is about so I went and got a Google 6 Pro this is the Pixel 6 Pro just to see what all the hype is about uh, is it any good and does it have all the problems that everyone says it does so uh, let's take a look So here it is, this is the Google Pixel 6 Pro phone um, and I got this one uh, at the end of December so if you remember in November, December there were problems with the Google 6 phone and they stopped rolling out the updates because the updates caused data problems. I'm so pleased to say that was solved and uh, I've got no data problems at all, get a decent signal and it all seems to be working. But is the Google 6 Pro phone any good? Well, there's quite a few bugs and glitches that have really disappointed me on it. And I've got to say, I'm a big Google Pro fan. I've had Google Android phones for years and years and years, and I've found them really good phones. So this was coming from a Huawei P30 Pro. And um, I've got to say, I think this is a poorer phone. I don't think it's as good. Um, if I go into the about on the phone, uh, and if I bring up the Android version, you can see I'm running the update that came out in January so it's 5th of January 2022 so this has supposedly got the bug fixes that were postponed from November December time to try and solve some of the problems and unfortunately I don't think it solved them so I'll show you a couple of the problems that I find so the pixel is powered off now as you know when you kind of move the phone about touch the screen it will wake up. Now I've disabled that because I found it was turning on constantly in my pocket and trying to dial emergency services which is no good. So you'll see mine I've disabled the tapping and the wake up. However that hasn't completely stopped it from waking up. Every now and again it will wake up even without a power button press and I've as yet worked out what it is that triggers it. You'll see it's not coming on at the minute. If I put it against me so that it goes dark and then bring it out into the light, it's not that. I'm not quite sure what's doing that, but at some point I'll figure it out. If I press the power button to bring it on, you can see it's come up. Now this is one of the biggest security flaws I think, in that if I now pull down the top bar, you'll see that we've got access to the menu. And from the menu here, yes, you can turn the torch on and off, which is handy. However, what we can also do is take a look at the internet control, switch off Wi-Fi, switch off mobile data. We can put it into airplane mode. We can switch, or well, we can try and switch location mode off, sorry. That's the one that does not allow you to do it but we've now turned off all network and data and to me that's a bit of a downside if this phone was stolen it's now lost its ability to send data so that's not ideal and again uh, bluetooth there i've just turned bluetooth off as well and i don't like this function this to me is causing a bit of a security issue and also the ability for you to pocket to keep switching functions on and off. Here's another one that I don't think is very good, the um, hotspot functionality. I can turn the mobile hotspot on and off. Again, 
without my fingerprint being in place. Um, which, to me, I don't like that function. And before you say it, on other Android phones, you could change that. Let me just go into the settings and I'll show you. So here we are in the lock screen settings. And if you look, show device controls, access controls when locked, it's actually switched off. So in theory, it shouldn't be operating, but it is. So this uh, it's either a bug or intentional, but that does cause me quite a bit of concern actually. And that takes me on to another thing. So we're not even at the point where the phone's unlocked. So if I now switch the phone on and go to fingerprint unlock, not recognized, not recognized, still not recognized. Now it unlocks. You saw I used the same finger throughout. I've retrained the fingerprint sensor on several times on the fingers that I used to unlock and it's just buggy. It doesn't work consistently. If I turn it off and back on and try my thumb, that time it worked. And you can see, so it's very inconsistent. There's also another interesting thing. A lot of phones have the in-display fingerprint sensor down the bottom of the screen. It's a long way up on this phone. There's actually, you'll see, if I, I'm having to stretch my thumb to get it into the right place for the fingerprint sensor. And I find that quite awkward. Um, I do like where the fingerprint sensor is right at the bottom of the screen and obviously more responsive. This one isn't as responsive as it could be. It's slow because you see, it does, it does take a bit of practice getting it right. Now, sure, I'm pressing it very briefly, but I know that on the Huawei P30 Pro, that would have unlocked the phone. Now, maybe Google are aiming for security and they want, they want the fingerprint sensor to work with higher security. But even so, that's a big downside to me and that's slowing down my functionality and my use of the phone, to be honest. Something else that I've been less than impressed is actually the camera on the phone. I thought the Pixel would have a great set of camera lenses, but actually they're not that fantastic. Um, it's got the three lenses that you can just about make out. Um, however, when you go in for macro, it doesn't seem to work very well. So, for example, if I take this bit of information here and I bring the Pixel phone in, it's actually telling me to move back because it can't focus. So it doesn't appear to have a very good functioning macro lens. If I continue out, out, out there, we've, we've now improved the focus that I can read the text. Don't know if you'll be able to see that on this camera. But for something that I use the phone for, which is a lot of macro use, Again, this has been disappointing. Now, I know that it's got lots of other functions like the arrays function and things like that, which actually I haven't done or I haven't played around an awful lot with. Um, I'm curious whether it actually works as they explain. So let's open this up. There we've got our, our photo. Let's try editing it and see if I can erase the object from the middle like all of the adverts tell me I should be able to. Let's see, uh, tools, magic arrays, there it is. That's the function you keep seeing on all of the adverts. And let's see whether I can erase that because it's a fairly plain background. So if I circle it, let's see what it does. And okay, it's not done too bad a job. Maybe I didn't circle it very well, so let's try again. It's got a reasonably complex background and you can see it's kind of got rid of the object not brilliantly but it's certainly passable actually a second go and that's excellent so maybe that's all it is maybe you need to circle a couple of times to improve the quality if i reset it you'll see the starting picture 
but that's all that's all kind of a gimmick that's a that's an add-on to the phone so that's the that's the bugs that i'm finding so far um otherwise charging is great it uses the uh the wireless charging function as you would expect you can charge other people's phone with reverse charging that's great however the battery is not great the battery life isn't as good as i thought because i thought this is a brand new phone they'll have improved the battery again you'll probably see i'm at 67 percent battery and it's 10 to 4 in the afternoon now i don't use my phone excessively i don't play games on it uh, i do a little bit of video work on it i.e I'm shooting this on a GoPro at the moment and what I do is I use the GoPro app to take a look and so I don't hammer the phone's util utilization so I don't think I'm a heavy user on the battery however it seems to go down at least to the 60s and 50s mark fairly quickly I've, I've yet to have a, a battery run out situation but it'll be interesting to see on those extended ones where you may need it for two days because you forget to charge or whatever and see whether it copes with that or not because it will be interesting to find out how well it performs let me know how how you get on with the battery as well i'd really like to know whether you find the battery is sufficient or not on your pixel 6 phone as well just continue from what i said it does estimate 22 hours battery use left at 67 percent now whether that's accurate or not i'm not sure but it may be worth seeing I'll, I'll have to try that out and see whether that's genuine or not so there we go so the answer to the question how pleased am i with the google pixel 6 pro phone i would say average i don't rate this as one of the super phones available at the moment to be honest, if I hadn't damaged the camera on my Huawei P30 Pro, I would class that as a superior phone, and it's older than this. So, so there we go. So that's my thoughts. Uh, the latest update has not addressed the problems, I also think. The buggy fingerprint sensor is still there. The drop-down controls when it's locked are still there. A few things that supposedly were getting fixed haven't been so that's a big disappointment in my book so there we go so that's my thoughts on the pixel phone from google let me know what you think in the comments and do subscribe to the channel would love you to subscribe and come back for a future video